Hello, it's January, Wednesday uh, the 12th, and I welcome you to this time of uh, midweek time of devotion and, and meditation. We are beginning a five-week series that lead us up to Lent, and our topic is hope. And I'm glad you can join me today for this time together. Today we're going to uh, read from Isaiah's 40th chapter, verses 25 through 31. Listen with me to the word of God. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal, asked the Holy One. Look up into the heavens, who created the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. O Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion, but those who hope in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. We thank God for the reading of his holy word. You know, there was a, <clears throat> a businessman who was late for a very, very important meeting. And he got to the building and, and there was no parking. He circled the block, desperately looking for a place to park as time was getting close. And as he frantically circled the block, he, he, he decided to pray about it. And so he looked up to heaven and he said, Lord, take pity on me. If you can find me a parking spot, I'll... I'll, I'll come to church every Sunday for the rest of my life. And, and Lord, I'll give up drinking. And just like that, almost a, a, like a miracle, a parking space appeared. And the guy looked up and said, uh, never mind, God, I found one. Promises, right? I'm, I'm, I like good pie. I like cherry pie is my favorite, but... The pie crust, the homemade pie crust, you know, for me that can make or break a pie. And, and it's uh, credited to Mary Poppins that she compares um, promises to pie crust. I think she said, uh, like a pie crust, a promise easily made is a promise easily broken. Promises are often made in sincerity, but they are fragile and crumbly, and sometimes they break up and just fall apart. And when we get burned a few times on broken promises, we become kind of skeptical of promise makers, and especially political promise makers, right? Because that's just a, a part of a political campaign, isn't it? An element of elections that the candidate makes all sorts of promises in, in order to get elected. And then, of course, when they get elected, they kind of forgot all about those promises they made. And I sometimes wonder whether we view God's promises in the same light as we view the promises of a politician. I wonder if we might sometimes think that God hasn't held up God's end of the bargain, so to speak. And when that happens, well, then God's reputation is at stake. I think we have all experienced how the people of Israel were feeling when Isaiah spoke in today's reading. Life was hard and they weren't happy. They were not happy with their circumstances, and, and from their perspective, God couldn't see what they were going through, right? My way is hidden from the Lord, it says. And God was disregarding their cause, or perhaps their right. In other words, God was both blind to their circumstances, and they were the victims of injustice at the hands of a God who was supposed to be showing them the his children, right, the, the true family of Israel, his chosen, instead of showing him 
favor, showing them his favor and blessing. So Isaiah responds, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of earth. He will not grow tired or weary in his understanding. No one can fathom. Isaiah is saying, hey, if God can create everything that we knew, no, surely God can intervene in our daily lives. God will keep God's promises. Author and minister Vic Pence tells of having bought a new blazer at Nordstrom's. It was one of those uh, times of buying a, a piece of clothing. You, maybe you've been through that. You know, you love it in the store. You get it home. You put it on. You wear it a couple of times. You just, man, you don't, you don't like it. You know, you, you've got it and you don't like it. And he, he wore it. He tried to wear it for a few times, but he just decided it was the wrong color. And it attracted lint, like lint was going out of style. And, and he wore it a few times, then he finally just put it in his closet and left there. And he didn't wear it, didn't get it out for close to a year. But tack, tucked away in the back of his mind all the while was that famous Nordstrom unconditional return policy. He thought, I've had this thing for a year and a half. I've worn it plenty of times. There's no way they're going to take it back, but... Deciding he had nothing to lose, he pulled it out of the closet and went back to Nordstrom, walked up to a salesman, and he gave him his little prepared speech. He said, I'm about to put your famous unconditional return policy to the ultimate test. I have here this blazer. I've worn it quite a few times. I've had it for a year and a half. I don't like it. It's the wrong color, and man, it attracts lint like crazy. But I want to return it. I want to return it for a blazer that... I like. He said the salesman stood there and shook his head and then smiled and said, well, for heaven's sakes, what took you so long? Let's go find you a blazer. Ten minutes later, Vic walked out with another blazer. God's like Nordstrom's, Vic said. When God says something, God means it. And God keeps his word. And that's Good news for us because, man, when we read the Bible, God makes all sorts of outlandish promises that we struggle to believe. And when we struggle to believe it, we lose hope. And when we finally get up enough courage or we're finally desperate enough and we finally come to God to take God at his word and say, Okay, God, I think God looks at us and shakes his head and responds, for heaven's sake, what took you so long? In a moving tribute for the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible, a newspaper in Nebraska, the Omaha World Herald, wrote this article uh, about uh, the King James Bible and how it was a series of articles, and I think they called it The Words Still Resound. And in this article, they referenced a, an incident from World War II. In the spring of 1940, the German army was plowing through France despite the help of more than 300,000 British troops. The U.S. troops weren't involved in this particular battle. Finally, the Germans surrounded and trapped most of the Allied forces at Dunkirk, a small town in northern France. It appeared that the Allied army would face, anni face annihilation or surrender. Eventually, though, a miraculous outpouring, through a miraculous outpouring of courage, the British managed to organize an amazing flotilla of hundreds of little ships that evacuated most of the Allied forces. But before the evacuation, at one point, when everything looked utterly hopeless, allegedly a British officer sent the following message, message condensed into three powerful words. But if not, at the time it was a strong message of courage and of ultimate hope in the midst of trouble. The message conveyed that the British would stand defiantly against the Nazis and that God would provide a way through the dark night. The Nebraska newspaper article went on to explain the background to the three-word message, but if not, that it came straight from the King James Bible. 
As the prophet Daniel and his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were facing the fiery furnace in in the third chapter of Daniel, they refused to go down in defeat. Instead, they declared their trust in God, even if their mission failed. According to Daniel 3, 17 and 18, they said, If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Amazing article, well written. But if not, words from God that can still speak to our hearts today. But if not, words of courage and hope when the world seems dark and hopeless. But if not, words to live by. And for some, words to die by. I don't know what's dragging you down today. I don't know the depths of your struggle. I don't know the the extent of your desperation, but I do know that I have felt what the people of Israel felt and wondered if God cared and wondered about the unfairness of life. And every time I have struggled with seemingly unchangeable circumstances, I have found that God was at work changing me, transforming me. Just as Isaiah proclaimed, But those who hope in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. We've all been there. We have all lost loved ones too soon. Faced personal tribulation. Struggled to keep moving forward. So we look and find hope and strength in our relationship with God and when God speaks to us saying, Child, my grace is sufficient for you. It is then that we can discover that the power of God was evident in our weakness. As we moved forward, we relied on God for strength, on God for hope. And this hope is secured in the knowledge that God keeps God's promises and we will never have to walk through that dark valley by ourselves. And that, my friends, well, that's good news. Thanks be to God. Let's close our time this morning or today with a time of prayer. Please pray with me. Gracious God, through the trials and tribulations of our lives, we look to you for courage and strength. We look to you for hope, the hope that only you can provide, the hope that we believe in your promises and that you will never leave us alone. In Jesus' name, we lift up our prayer. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me today, and I invite you to join me again next week as we continue our discussion and our meditation on hope. God bless.